So in the last video we made the register function of the Facetta Word server and we can now register accounts. Uh, the next step we need to do is be able to verify the email addresses. So what we need to do first is make a, well we don't have to, but what we're going to do is make a nice HTML style email to send out to the users. So we're going to make something like this. I've just whipped this up in Photoshop um, so we can um, design something like this. Uh, so obviously what we're going to do here is make um, a HTML, uh, CSS, web page, if you will, that's going to then get sent uh, via email as a HTML email. So to make this in normal web, uh, using normal CSS is obviously super easy. There's no issue whatsoever to do this. However, what you will find, uh, and it's kind of disappointing, is that when you make HTML for emails, uh, you're going back to the 1990s. Uh, and I mean that literally. There's almost no support for anything in email HTML uh, universally. So if you want to write an email that will look very similar to this across all uh, email clients, then you're extremely limited. And the way you actually design the HTML and CSS becomes messy and quite you know, cumbersome because you can imagine that's what it was like designing um, emails you know, 28 years ago. Um, so we're going to start with this, um, but it's kind of a disclaimer that the CSS and HTML we're using for this specific HTML email page is very, very specific to uh, emails only. And that we would obviously make it a lot nicer and a lot cleaner if it was just a website. So this is what we're going to be working off. We want to make um, a web page looking like this. So we'll use DNA web uh, because we can. So we'll call this a uh, email. Uh, I've got plenty of videos on using DNA web. If not, you can just type the HTML directly. There's going to be nothing special being done here with DNA. I'm just using it as a um, just a tool, basically, to make it easier for us to work with. So we've typed in uh, DNA web. We've got DNA web installed from dnaweb.io. Uh, and then you just go into the folder and type DNA web here, and it starts up. Now it's started up. We want to type new template dna.blank. Let's just get a, a blank template going. Uh, it opens up uh, this uh, Visual Studio code window, if you have the code window. Um, and then it also opens up the page. I'm just going to invert that for the moment just to prevent your eyes from burning. We'll change that back after. So now we have a standard DNA web uh, setup. Again, you're free to ignore this. Uh, there's also videos on how to use DNA web. Um, but ultimately now what we have is a header, a footer, and an index with a h1. And the ultimate output is simply this bit of HTML code here. Uh, let's zoom in on this a little bit. Um, so there's nothing nothing special we're doing with DNA Web. So if you don't want to use DNA Web, you can follow along still. Just remember that basically all we have is a header, an index, and a footer that get combined into a single file. And that's all we're really working with. And we also have the added benefit of having this uh, automatic refresh page. So if we just change this to header two and save, we get the refresh. So we can work kind of live. So that's all we're using DNA Web for, for the most part, uh, in here. So the first thing we'll do is we have a style page. Uh, we'll make, or style CSS rather, we'll make another one called reset.scss. And in here we'll do some uh, basic reset. So similar to how we do resets in normal uh, web design, um, we want to reset stuff that's specific to 1990s HTML type things. So you don't need to really necessarily understand this. I'll kind of talk through it loosely, but what we'll do on the body of the email, uh, so when you're viewing an email, the body, we'll remove all margin and padding just to be sure. So reset margin padding and what this is aiming at doing is making a um, you know a universal uh, universally stable and similar UI uh, based on all browsers uh, and all email clients so they look the same that's all the resets doing and next up we'll do the image so we've used any images uh, and again some standard things that happen are oh, you sometimes get a blue border uh, so we'll just remove the border thickness and color. Uh, then you can images by default also size strangely um, on you know some clients. So we'll set the height 
uh, to auto, which will then simply mean the width of the image is what then dictates the height. The, it'll stay in the same aspect ratio. Um, we'll also set, in case they're used in line, uh, we'll do a line height of 100%, so it's simply treated the same, you know, removes any kind of padding if it's used in line. Um, so that'll be set line height. So in line works. Uh, and then we don't want any outline, because again, you sometimes get an outline property. Um, these are all really old things, like I say, that you, you won't see these days, but trust me, they do happen in emails. Um, so we have outline, what else? We've got text decoration sometimes, if you use an image inside of an anchor. Uh, so no, or yeah, basically an image inside an anchor. Uh, so we'll get rid of text decoration, and that's specifically usually like an underline or a, again, a, a border looking thing, which almost exclusively an underline. Uh, so that's the image. Then we've got, as I mentioned, when you use an image inside of an anchor, um, then you want to remove the border explicitly there again, because sometimes it doesn't honor the fact that you've told it here. Again, some old clients do that. Uh, so we just remove border again. Uh, and then what we're going to be doing in the main design, the only real way we can design an email HTML template exclusively and well uh, is through the use of tables. So that's how we're going to make the design. So again, the first thing we want to do is stabilize the, the tables and normalize the, um, the layout of them as much as possible. So the best thing to do is uh, remove any border um, that might get added some spacing uh, and remove the padding. And this is just aimed at making it so it, it acts more like divs, if you will, that you simply place them in and there's no kind of extra spacing. Um, and then I think that's really it. Uh, one other thing we'll do is for headers, just this is not really specific to emails, this is kind of what I do in almost all web design. Uh, is there a H7? No, there isn't. Um, in here, let's just remove the margin of headers um, because I like to use padding around content elements to keep padding equal. And then the margin that's typically set on headers always throws the kind of the clinical precision of the padding all out. So this is not really email specific, uh, but certainly what I class as a reset. Um, so that's the reset done. Um, and what like sales I'll do is reset everything to um, being usable. Uh, right, right. Copy and paste reset. So we've added it to the um, to the page there. So that we've got the style sheet. And now in here we press Control and U. Uh, oh, well, we haven't refreshed, have we? I haven't saved. Let's save that and the show. I didn't see refresh. There you go. So you've now got it included. You've got the reset and the style. Um, they just get compiled. So we have that now in and ready to make use of. Um, so, so if we go into the main content here now, um, and let's just start with some table design. Um, so as I mentioned, it's it's only for emails and it's very old, but um. You know, that's the only thing we can use. So the first thing we'll do is chuck a table in. And then something that most people don't use is the T body. They kind of forget about that, which is at the body of the um, the table. Um, let me just try and fix these tabs. That's one thing that drives me a little bit nuts with um, VS Code. It seems to put four tabs in by default. You have to remove them, save, and reopen the file. Um, so let me just get a structure up here a minute and then explain. So if we do that and save, you can see we've now got test and it's right up the top corner. Um, we can do style equals background red, just to kind of see. So you can see it's top corner right up there um, and it's not full width. Uh, so what we have here, table, you, can, you can't really think of them as divs, but there's honestly no, no other way to kind of explain tables uh, very well. Tables are what you'd expect, a classic table, rows and columns. So you'd have you know, so many rows, so many columns. Uh, but the way they style and layout in HTML is a bit awful. So you've got the main table. Inside that, you've got the body, which is just always should be there, but is massively um, excluded for the most part. It's just a design thing that people forgot and never use. So most browsers don't use it, but really you should put a T body. Inside that, then you put rows. So if you have multiple rows, you do it like that. You know, row, 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 row. And then this is the columns inside the row. So we're going 
rows like this going down, but then inside here we've got columns. So this would be, uh, well, if we save, you'll see, you should have four rows now. And then what you can do inside of the rows is add multiple columns. So now you get multiple columns going. And you can see because uh, we have the reset um, in here, we have nice clean styles. Uh, if we were to remove the reset, uh, you can see then look at the default in this browser specifically. You've got some margin around the table, you've got some cell padding, uh, you've got some difference in space in between three cells. So that's what the reset's doing. It's kind of bringing that back in line to be um, almost like divs that you simply expect rows to be down, columns to be across, and to be no excess padding at all. Um, so that's kind of what we've achieved there. And as I mentioned, you can think of them as tables with rows, and yet the rows contain the the columns that's how they have to be so it's table row column and then however many columns you want and then the next row and there's a lot of quirks with tables um i don't know how much it's worth going into though to be honest because this really is just a um we're just doing uh, an email template and you'll almost never use this code and this style and this information outside of email templates it's so um specific to email templates i don't want to go crazy deep dive into tables um because also the other thing with making a an email template is it's not necessarily like you have the knowledge and you remember it. You simply end up Googling a lot or trying a lot of, of ways and trying on multiple browsers to find out what simply works best and then going, there you go, this is what works. So it's not really a, a case of education in the classic sense. It's more about simply, this is what works, so use this kind of layout. And in emails, tables are the only universally viable thing that make sense and work. Uh, there's other quirks that we'll go into as we go, that everything has to be inline CSS, so you can't technically have styles like we've got now, but we'll solve that at the end. Um, so you can't have like classes with content in, like we'll say this is the container. If you then put this into email clients, some of them won't work because they don't even work with, you know, basically expect everything to be in line, but we'll use a tool at the end of this to inline everything, what we've done. So we'll design it now in a modern environment, if you will, um, and then we will um, inline everything at the end. So let's just get started. So you've got a table, a row, a column, and we've got test in there. So I'm going to try and structure this. So the first top level container uh, fills entire email viewport. So when you have an email, this table we want to stretch out. And as you've seen right now, it doesn't. Um, so let's go to a style uh, in here. And we'll just put some styling in for the container itself. Um, and then, well, in fact, let's set up some uh, variables first that we'll make use of. So we'll pull in, uh, we're using SAS, obviously, so we can uh, specify some variables. We want the green background of the image, um, which I've got written down. Uh, it is OD9E73. Uh, and that's the background color of, uh, obviously, this background. We then want the the white background here, the content background, the text background for the text, uh, the button background here, the button text um, color there, and I think that's it. So we'll specify all those. So we'll have uh, content background color, and then it's easy for you guys to customize as well if you wanted. That'll just be white. Uh, text color will just be black. Um, Button background color as FBBD1F, I think. Ooh. It's going to show me the color. I've done something wrong there. I'll put a hash on white. There we go. Yep. And what else is there? Button text color. And that is 833B2O. So that's the colors in this body of text you want. So that's your colors. For fonts, uh, again, fonts are another thing you can't really use in most email clients, but we will try. So what we're going to do is kind of a double fullback. We're going to do a, a default font, which I'll just say is sans uh, serif, which is just the rounded font. Uh, and then we'll also have a web font that we'll try and use. And I'm going to make use of quicksand, uh, which we'll, we'll put in after. Um, we have then font sizes, some standard font sizes. So we'll do uh, font size normal for kind of 
the text. Uh, and that will do you know, quite big because this is, I haven't got much content in. So we want a fairly large uh, font size. And then font size large will do twice the size for kind of the, the header. And I think that is about proportional. Um, we'll also set the line height. So even though we haven't really got any line height here, uh, I always like to set a line height for um, about 1.4. And that, what that means is the distance between two lines will increase by 40%. So, oh, you've got a standard line here to slightly space out. And it looks typically looks better. Uh, totally optional, but that's what that is. We'll also then chuck in a base size for spacing. Uh, similar to the uh, DNA grid, if you've used DNA Web before. And I'm just going to copy and paste all these sizes from, D well, from DNA Web and slightly tweaked. So we just have a bunch of spacings that we can make use of for keeping paddings in proportion and sense. So it's all based off a of base size. And then if you want to increase this, the whole, you know, size of your, your design will increase proportionally and equally. Um, so that's just a bunch of sizes that are percentage of the base size. So small, normal, tiny should really go there. Tiny, small, or to be honest, that could be called smaller. Well, I'll leave it for tiny for now. Tiny, small, normal, large, large, or huge. Might not use them all, but we've got them there available. So that's some variables. Uh, so let's now get back to what we were doing. Um, first, we'll just set up the um, the text. So as you can see there, we'll now do, that's a serif font, by the way, if you right click inspect and go to computed um, or layout. No, it's computed styles, uh, browser styles, there we go. And we should have in here font family. <clears throat> and you can see that it's serif by default. So again, we don't want, I don't like serif font. Um, so we'll change this to font family and use the variable default font family and save. And this should change to ser uh, sans serif now, which is round and plain. So that's that included. Uh, and the what the trick I'm going to do here is uh some emails remove the body so when you send an email and it includes the header and the head and the body some emails completely remove that and you're only left with this part so the trick i'm going to use to also um try and apply uh the web specific font is to apply the standard fallback to the body uh, which should be honored um and then inside the actual container that we're going to do, the top level thing that's going to host everything. Um, I'm going to put the web specific font name in there, which won't exist right now, but we will add it. So web font if supported, which like I say, unfortunately most aren't, but the ones that are then look nice. Um, so that will be web font family. If we save that, nothing will change because in fact it has changed and somehow it's even picked up the font. How the, <laughs> I don't even know that's picked it up. Unless that has in some way tried to, oh, I know why it's picked it up because, because my system's got quicksand installed. This physical Windows machine's got quicksand font installed. So you've actually seen quicksand, but obviously this wouldn't work on a machine without it installed. Um, but we will, you know, try and support that. So uh, the container, which is the top table, is the topmost uh, table inside the body. That's the point of this. So we set the web font. Again, we'll reset margins and padding uh, just to be sure, because you will be surprised that if you set it at one level and you go one more level deep into a table, um, again, email specific HTML tends to ignore and re-add padding and margins. So these are the things I know work from literally testing and, and experience. Um, and this is, again, I keep reiterating, this is not how you typically have to do CSS. Uh, this is a very specific way of having to do it to make it work for emails. Um, so the other thing we want to do is let's just chuck a background in so we can see. Uh, in fact, we can put the background color in anyway because we'll be using it. Uh, so we'd have background color uh, and that would be the background color variable. Save that. You can see it's there. Um, so the other thing we want is to fill all available space. So for that, we'd have the width is 100%. And let's just force that in case, again, anything tries to override it. We really want this to be 
fill in you know everything that's available uh, for height even though it's 100 percent fill you won't fill down because there's no content so we could explicitly try and do things but um the way emails work is they should only be the size there's no such thing as a viewport as such in the, the email body you can't tell it to be 100 percent height of your email that's visible uh, that's just something that won't work in emails so 100 percent simply is there to make sure it's got content but really that doesn't really do much it just expands as there's content put in but as we fill the email out that's fine we can make something that forces it to a certain size or adds padding so uh, that's kind of the size done uh, we've got the font family um, we can also do a full back in here which we probably should do uh, of default font family in fact we should just do that on both so that in the body and the container we set the font uh, or to be honest, I don't even know whether the body would have any effect, but there's no harm leaving it in to try and force this font to work when it's in an email. Um, so we first set that, and then that'll get used, and if that failed or wasn't available, it'd fall back to this. So it kind of um, forcefully tries to get that to work. Um, what else do we want? We want to set the font size up uh, to the variable we've done so that the font size is standardized. And we'll do font normal, and that means this TD should have now a bigger font, which it does. Uh, I'll set that line height up. Again, this is optional. It's just something I like to do. Uh, so if we have any multiple lines, uh, they tend to look a lot nicer. Oh, make sure we use the variable. I don't think that'll affect the yeah, see It slightly affects the padding top and bottom, uh, which is fine. And then um, one last thing I know we want to try and do is force Microsoft and WebKit to not adjust our font. Uh, so don't adjust our font size for us. And that would be MS text size adjust. And just force that to 100% and then change that to WebKit also. So that should be a kind of standard container now. We've got, it's a table, but it's now 100% width. No extra padding and margin. Trying to apply our font, our size, uh, and our color, and to not adjust the font. So again, it's all really boilerplate stuff to try and just force this into a standard layout um, that we shouldn't have to do in anything but uh, web. So we have that now. So now we want to do something useful. Um, so the first thing we want to do, if we looked at the picture here, I guess, is to start, the way I'm visualizing this is we'd have, this is your email body, the green all around, um, and then we'd have the container, which is obviously what we just spoke about the whole thing. Then we'll have a wrapper um, that limits to the width of an email, which is typically 600 pixels. Um, and then inside of that would be this actual content. So it's kind of like the grid layout. We'd have the container on the outside, the wrapper keeps it to this set size, if you will. And then the content goes inside of that wrapper, so it stays center. So the first thing we want to do is get the content centered. Um, so it's fairly easy. Um, funnily enough, one of the things that are easy in tables is to align center. So we have the row, then we have the, the main thing here. So this is the uh, centered, or rather, this centers and limits width to recommended size. So first thing we want to do for this, align equals center, save, and ta-da, we've got center text already. So that does the alignment. Uh, and then we'll add a class called wrapper, uh, and then we'll apply all of our styles inside the, the wrapper now. Um, and as mentioned, this is the style for the inner content now ready. Um, so we'll have a wrapper, and this wraps contents to email width. And again, if you read up on emails, the um, recommended width is about 600 pixels, which is super small, but we're gonna make ours responsive. So in theory, our um, email can be opened up on any size screen. We're not really gonna impose a limit, which is, you know, will work for us. Uh, so first thing we wanna do with the um, this specific TD, which is really the, the top layer wrapper, is we're gonna turn it to display as a block. Um, and you wouldn't usually do this um, because this then kind of throws off anything else in the table. Um, because in this design, we've got one. Uh, this is the only thing we're going to have in this table. It kind of won't affect anything else because we're just going to put everything inside of here. So we can make use of that 
uh, fact that we're inside of a single row that we're running an error of a single row of that we can just force it to block. And the reason I force it to block is to make sure that padding works. Um, so we will have um, what we have then. We have some padding. Uh, so we've got uh, love spacing larger for some padding and save that. And you can see now we've already got some uh, padding around the the content, which is good. Um, and now we really need to start putting stuff inside to see anything. So inside of here, in order to then do anything else, so now we need like an image and, um, you know, we need this image, then we need these two lines, and then we need this white. So going down, we need rows. So what we need now is another table. So we've got a table inside of um, the column. And again, once you've done a table, you have to do a T body. And then inside there, uh, we will first put here, keep commenting the section so we can remember it. So this is start of wrapped content. Uh, and then we'll have here a row. And this is why I say our VS Code's a bit annoying sometimes with the way it aligns things. It's not great at aligning. Um, so to do an image, we'll have a row with a single column. And in the column, we'll then have the image. And the source will be set up, assets, images, logo. Um, and then I'll have to go and grab this logo, you know, this one. So I'll, I've made it in advance. Um, but we just, we chuck that in. We have a single row. And we save that. And then you should see, you just got a, a failed image. Uh, so let me just go and grab that image and place it in this folder. So we have... Uh, desktop email source so we go to uh, desktop email source this is the folder we created uh, and then what I'll do in here is make a folder called assets and make a folder called images which is the path we specified and then paste the images in and as you can see, nothing happens right now, and that's because we haven't set up DNA Web to copy the output um, to the, the output folder here. So we've got no output. So to do that, we just open the DNA config in the top level here. Um, and we want to put in some uh, static uh, folders that will basically take the content and clone it. So this is again DNA web specific, but all we're ultimately doing is outputting a folder where your HTML is called assets, images, and then the images go in there. Uh, so we have some static folders. Um, that's an array. And in here, we'll have an item as the source set to assets. And the source being, we're in the source folder and we're on about this folder here. So assets. And the destination uh, value is we go up a folder from source into web root and then um, into assets. And that should be it. So if we pull up the log first here and save and also go into assets here, as we save, you'll see this whole thing will respin up now, start a new server. Um, and then the image is there, and if we jump back to this folder, you can see it's now been copied over. So if you're not using DNA Web, just literally make a folder called whatever you want. I've just called it assets. Now we've got the image in there. Um, that's what we've got. Let's see if we need to do any styling on that now. So let's just mark this up first again, keep track. Uh, this row would be top image. Uh, the only thing I'd say looking at this is we want a bit more padding. And what I'm thinking of doing for every item is this is the padding around here of the actual the wrapper, so the whole email. But then as we put something below the image, so we put another image below, you can see there's no padding as such. Um, so we want to, um, I think we'll do uh, on the content, because that's the only thing that'll have the padding, uh, sorry, on the column, um, we'll add some, call it content item, say. 
And all the content item will be as a style that will chuck some extra padding around. So let's just make a content item. And this is just general item with padding. And this is just to keep padding consistent between items again. So we'll just do padding, spacing, large, say. Save that, and we get the extra padding. Um, and I think that's it, to be honest. I don't think we need any more styling there. So that's the image done, fairly painless. Uh, now we'll move on to the white bars. So we want to make these white bars. Um, so again, the only thing we can do uh, is the rows and columns. So this will be the page behind one, we'll call it, because they're meant to act like, you know, they're meant to look like pieces of paper behind. So TR, uh, TD, and then we don't need anything in there. Uh, the only thing I think we might need is, I know we will for styling. So in order to get, funnily enough, one of the things that is difficult to do in uh, email HTML is to just simply specify what would typically be in here, a div that's say 80% width, 90% width and a set height. You can't do that with tables. They don't honor heights. Uh, you have to mess with borders and all kinds of things. So in order to just get this line, this baseline, this is the way I've, I've found that works almost universally everywhere. So I don't expect you to understand this bit here or even bother to, to be honest, because this is just a kind of copy and paste this statement and then tweak the CSS and this will get you a um, a solid, just a, a block of color and a set height and a set width that you want. Um, and the trick to doing that that I found that works best uh, is to embed a table uh, inside just so it's got something inside to um, force it to actually be of some size and not be of nothing. So that's your standard table uh, here with nothing special whatsoever. It's inside a, a table's column already. So this is like the content, if you will. And all we're doing inside of all of that um, is chucking um, a non-breaking space that stands for. So that means a space, physical character like that, a space. Um, but what usually happens if you just put a space like that, then this gets ignored and removed. Um, so a non-breaking space is forcefully always going to be shown as a space inside uh, the content. So if we save that, you can see it's there. So that's your your force space. Now, it might work in this browser, but if we did this instead, you can see it's gone. See, there's no space. So a non-breaking space forces the actual space to always be rendered, if you will. So we're using this space to simply uh, tell the... Um, email clients that you have to render this. You're going to have to now make content of some height. Then the trick is we're going to make the line height zero and the font height zero. So there's nothing there. Um, and then set the border, I think we'll set. Um, so it's basically a little trick to getting a simple um, set height block, which seems ridiculous how complicated it is. But again, this is email HTML. So uh, We'll call it page behind one. Um, this we will sort out after. So let's start with page behind one. Uh, in fact, we might as well do uh, one and two at the same time. And it's going to be exactly the same. So let's just copy and paste that twice because we've got two lines. The only thing that will change is the width. Uh, so we'll do page behind one and two. Save that. Page behind one, two here. Um, and then we'll get this going. So first thing I mentioned, um, solid blocks of color. Um, first thing we want to do is remove any white space, uh, which is the thing we just put in, this space. We want to get rid of that. So we'll do font size, zero. Uh, line height, zero. Save, and you can see magically now it's gone again because we told it to be no pixels high. We set it to one, um, one pixel, and line height, one pixel. You can see, we, well, you can't see that because it's tiny, um, but we have, you, you can see the slight alteration um, in size. So there it is there. Uh, we go to one, you'll see, and if you watch this line closely here, when we change it from naught and save, See, it does slightly change. So we've now controlled the height to be effectively nothing. So we've we've got back to a piece of content now that's nothing, but the email clients have to honor and render because there's actual content in there. 
So then what we're going to do, we're going to step inside the table TR, uh, sorry, table T body TR TD to get to this element here. So we'll just do table uh, T body TR TD. And that's all we're doing. We're getting down to um, the content itself to style. So the white space content itself. And we're going to then make use of this column that has to now be rendered that's currently no width no height um and we're going to force um stuff on it so again i mentioned clone this in because it gets re-added uh, inside a table and then now we'll set the uh width to well we don't need to set the width because there'll be changes Let's just set the width temporarily a minute to 100 percent just so we can see it Save that so far and you'll see nothing changes because we have no height. So the way we're going to force a height, um, which works, because again, height won't work, believe it or not, um, in you know email. I keep saying this, you won't believe the, the stupidness and the, the lack of support in email, HTML. It, it drives you nuts sometimes, but this is what it is. The way we're going to do this uh, is to make a solid bar of color uh, using the border because it has to want a border. So that's one of the things it's good at actually doing. So we'll just chuck a border on the top. Uh, we'll just make it the tiny spacing size we had, um, solid, and then the content background color we want. So basically that's like saying border top is four pixels solid white. Save that, and we can see we have nothing right now, which is interesting. Um, oh, I know the other thing we've got to do is change the, we should do that at the top, I guess. Um, we'll do display as inline block because again the thing that this the reason we can change the display is because we have a table with a single row single column like we did above we can trick it and say display this as an inline block so that it honors uh, borders um, and the size of borders um, but if you did that and did multiple columns or rows things would go wrong but because we're only using the inner table with one element we can do that so we change this to inline block I believe that should get us a line not quite yet. Okay, let's keep going. Um, in fact, let's just do 10 pixels. No, something is going on. Oh, all it is. I've used the wrong color. It's not content background color. Um, it was, uh, or was it content background color? Oh no, just content background color white. I thought I'd use the wrong color. Um, save. Yeah, because it's there. Okay, let's keep going anyway. Uh, we have, what else have we got to do? Clear padding again, because that will get re-added in every TD. Uh, so we'll do padding zero. Um, we also will, let's reset the margins. So, uh, margin left auto, margin right auto to kind of center it, even though I don't think this will be needed. Uh, put the margin bottom. Something that's not right, so I'm pretty sure it should be in now. So we'll investigate in a minute. Took some margin bottoms in now. So, um, what am I missing here? Something's out. Something's not quite right, because this should now be working, I believe. Um, so let's investigate this. So we have a TD, it's there. The table's there. Um... This is in. So the table width is not set. Um, the table itself should be. Oh, we haven't set a size. Sorry, we we set the. That's what's going on. So we set the width of here, the inner column. Set inner column to take up all width. So we do that there. We don't need columns I don't believe this will have spacing below white bar so that's the uh, this padding here between the lines um, so that's all in so it's now sized but we have no width of this this part here has no width uh, because that's the bit we need to size we've got the row we need to set the rows width uh, so to do that we'll just set them both say to uh, width 90% for now and we still have no 
bar. Why has that not been honored? Um, oh, because we'll have to set it on the TD. So that will be the TD. You can't set the width of the row. You have to set it to the column. Um, so width. And this is what I mean about um, email design being so annoying. Uh, and I'm still doing it now, not the TD. It's the it's this table we want to set, not this TD. Uh, when we look to the tables, the thing with no width. There we go, finally. So, still not right, but we've now got content. Um, so let's investigate a little bit further. Oh, it is right, actually. What we've got here is tables will only size to fill what space they need right now. Uh, so the wrapper, we haven't explicitly... We haven't finished for one, but we haven't told this table to be any set size. So if we really wanted to, uh, we could tell this table here to be uh, width 100% to fill the content, um, which you know we don't want right now. Um, but that's the that's where we're now getting. We've, we've got so far. So let's tweak these values first. Uh, so we have the page behind one and two. So let's just do page behind one table uh, width and then we'll do uh, that's the smaller one let's do 75% say um, copy and paste and page behind two we'll do 90% save that and then you can see there last thing we need to do is center the TD I think uh, probably works if we chuck it on two we'll probably see um, there we go, so that now centers them. Um, again, ignore the size right now um, with you know the, the bits being in. Let's just jump back and add some more content now. So we have the two bars, we have the image, and now we want some actual, the main page, the physical page content. So again, the same thing, we'll have a TR, TD, uh, we want to line that center just the same because we want all the stuff to say uh, to stay central. Class we'll chuck on it. We'll call it page content, and we'll style that in a minute. Um, so inside the row, like before, because we've got multiple bits of uh, things we want in there. So we've got the, this one, this one, this one, this one. We'll chuck another table in um, so that we can center this, and then just have. We can style this table all white like a page and then have a table inside of it to fill that content. So inside here we'll have a table, we'll give it a class um, and we'll center the text inside, text center. And all we'll do is style that with uh, text align center. And then we've got tbody, uh, table row again, table D again, and then we'd have some content in here. This will be verify. Uh, email so we'll go back up and comment this just to again keep the the order so this is page content uh, this then is the page content itself going in which we styled that's the column and this is the main table uh, table containing page contents so that we can style the page itself or effectively this white and then have stuff inside. Um, and then we'll have this one now is a header, this row, um, copy and paste, and we'll have um, basically just the text, isn't it now? Um, so we'll chuck the text in. Uh, we don't want a header, we can just do the text directly for now. So we'll say, hi, Luke. Uh, save that. You can see we're starting to get somewhere. We haven't styled the colors yet, uh, but we've got that in there. Uh, we want some padding between these two. So let's just chuck that content item class on things. And this is where that class will come in useful now. If you chuck the class on both things, even though we've got no wire, you'll see it'll start equally spacing things out and making it look right. So we'll have more text, uh, which we could just chuck inside one thing. Uh, but because I'm going to make use of this content item to separate them out, to put the right padding in, I'm going to separate these two. Uh, thanks for creating an account with us. Uh, and then we're going to forcefully break line to force it on a new line. Uh, to continue, 
please verify your email with us. Uh, I think that's it. Save that. Yes, yeah, so you can see now, other than we haven't styled text align or made it white yet, um, we're not far, you know, it's looking okay at the minute. Uh, it's looking similar to this. So we'll come back to the button because that's going to be a pain to do. So right now we have a structure of um, page content, so it's in a table. So we need to style page content and a text center. Uh, so the text center is nice and easy to do. Uh, you can just chuck in here dot text center and just do text align center. Save that. Uh, center align text. So that's already solved that bit. Uh, and now we want to style the page content. And also, we, we haven't finished styling the wrapper, but uh, we'll style the page content at the same time. So the page content's nice and easy. Uh, page content, uh, we just want the background of the content background color. And there we go. Yeah, that's not right. Oh, yeah. So we've still got my applied style on here. Disable that now. So there's the style. Um, we've got the content background color and add some padding uh, to inside the you know this padding I want the extra padding uh, so this will be spacing we'll do spacing huge on um, the left and right I believe that is sorry top and bottom and then do spacing normal on left and right so we want more spacing top and bottom than we do left and right so it, it just tends to look nicer i think or we can even them out makes no major difference uh actually i prefer that keeping it even and it keeps it even all the way around uh our little man's decided to no longer be centered um trtd Align equals center. Get back in there. There we go. So actually, we're not far off already. We've come quite a long way in a, a quick amount of time there, chucking content in. So let's just take a look before we keep going at... I know I was in the middle of doing... We've done the body. Uh, container, I'm happy with. Wrapper, I was in the middle of. We haven't finished yet. So we did block. We did the padding. Um... What else do we want? I don't think we need anything actually. Uh, no, I think that is actually it. That's all we need on there. So that's the wrapper done. Content items a general thing. Text center's fine. The two page behind blocks are now okay. I think I'm happy with that. So I think actually we're up to date there. Uh, page content, yeah, that's all there is. So that's not bad. So let's move on to the fun part. Uh, and again, this is similar to this block line here. Creating a button in CSS is very easy, typically. Creating a button in email, if you just simply Google email HTML CSS button, you'll see that there's hundreds and hundreds of people trying to do it different ways and ones that have come out the most popular. Uh, the way I've come up with it, I don't think is actually the same as anybody else. This is very close, but it's the same principle as what I've done here, the same tricks I've used. So what we want to do is obviously make that... Um, where's the image gone? We want to make this button. So, and we also want the button to be clickable everywhere around. Uh, so let's just chuck it in and I'll explain as I go. And again, this is, I wouldn't deviate from this style unless you already know what you're doing. Um, because this is a well proven and tested style I've done. Um, so the usual, we'll make the row with the column in, uh, comment it as button, and put some padding around it, which is fine. That's all normal stuff. Uh, then, Inside here, we will chuck another table, the usual trick, and we'll call this one button on a style, and we'll style this up. So again, like every other table, a body, a row, a TD. Why does Visual Studio Code make it so bad at aligning things? There we go. Uh, and in here now, finally, a button needs a, a link to go to somewhere. So we'll just go right now to my website. Uh, and make it target equals blank not that you really need that but again we'll chuck it in and we'll say um, verify your email so verify 
your email. So if we were to just save that now, you can see we get um, basically an, an anchor, a normal clickable link. So there's that. Now what we want to do is style specifically. We've got the padding already from the content item and the line center. So if we were to move that, you'd see you'd lose your padding. So we've added padding around it first. We've center aligned it horizontally. And then we just made a table with a single row, single column, and a single link, and a class of buttons. So now we'll style that button. So this is just going to be a style called button. I know one thing I forgot, actually. We never styled the header. Let me just style um, this header. We never used the font size we'd got, which was font size large. Oh, in fact, it's the same size anyway. Let me just double check that. Yeah, so it just happened to be the font size large I chose was the font size. Uh, but that's the large header text. Uh, right, so button, back to where we were. So inside the button, the thing we're going to be styling ultimately is this. This is the main thing you can style to add padding to, as I mentioned in the last one, the column. So let's just jump straight into the, the column style. Uh, let's do background color equals button background color. Save that. There you go. We've got the background color. Uh, let's do border radius. Give it the roundedness, which surprisingly does work. It's been working for many, many, many years. Uh, which, with all the things that don't work, you'd think border radius wouldn't. So you can see now we've got the rounded border. Looks fairly simple so far. Now what we need to do to add the padding, because bear in mind this color and border is on the um, column. It's not on the link. So if we were to pad out, which I don't think will work anyway, um, in the style, just chuck some padding on. Oh, there you go. You can see now you can click the link, but everything else around it is not clickable. Um, and also, this won't work when you send an email anyway. So even though you see it visibly here, what you see here won't necessarily work when you send it as an email. So keep that in mind as well, just because it looks like that kind of works. It doesn't always. So in order to make the button itself clickable, so everywhere you click inside, it's clickable. We need to jump into the the link itself um, and style that link and put the padding on that link. Uh, basically, that's what we need to do. So we've got the button link. We want to duplicate this um, because what we're going to do is add um, padding inside here, and it's going to expand out. Um, and we want to double up on our um, our ability and emails for this to work. So some. Uh, email clients on this, some email clients on this, some on both. So by putting it in both first, just duplicating the style, um, we end up with the same style. So if we change this color, say, to uh, red, oops, don't think that will work. You'll see there you've got red and you've also got behind the, the tab. So it's kind of just um, a double uh, verification for email clients so that some, well, basically more than um, whichever work on one or the other now work on both sort of thing, if that makes any sense. Set the text color, because that's still wrong. So that'll be color, button text color. Um, save. Uh, add the padding now, which does work on anchors. So padding will have, this time we will have spacing, uh, spacing normal top and bottom, and we'll have more spacing on the left and right, because I think that just looks better on a button. Uh, that's that. And we'll have no underline. So text decoration, I believe it is, gets rid of that underline. And then um, I don't think we need display inline blocks. It seems to already be working, but let me just chuck that in. Oh, the display inline block allows the padding of the content item to work properly. So that's allowed that. And now you can see the button itself is clickable all around. So we've made a button. Um, that works in email now that looks like a button which rounded and colored. Um, so that is not far off now a complete visual that we wanted. Um, so the only thing left is to chuck that word facetto by word icon in and then we're not far off similar and then we'll get around to testing um, if it works. So this is kind of a universal button style you can make use of uh, and tweak as you need. Um, so let's jump back into here. We've got the button now. Uh, hover over and collapse that. So we have the page content now. It will come out of the page content because the page content says white block. 
uh, and we want to put the actual image outside of that now. So this will be just the same as all the others. I'm sure you're used to it by now. A row, a column, um, and you're used to Visual Studio Code never formatting my code correctly as well. This is the text logo. And just like the other one, it's just an image with a source. That's set to assets, images, text logo, I think I called it. Save. There we go, that appears. Uh, so let's now fix this. Class equals text logo. And we'll also center that. So that's there. And now text logo uh, really just needs a bunch of padding. So we will go to the bottom. Text logo. And... We will then have some padding, uh, which will be top and bottom. In fact, I'm going to do it differently on here to make it look right, because what we've got is the, the padding there, but this hasn't got padding around because it's style. So we're going to tweak, and we'll do specifically the padding top. We'll chuck some huge spacing in twice, so it's got a double amount to compensate for the complete lack of any. Um, and the bottom will do spacing larger. And I wouldn't usually have to do this kind of almost hackish way of double padding, but because we're in an email and because I can't pad this block in order to maintain all the other styles, I kind of have to just add it to the previous one. So there's the email. Um, and now if we were to look at this in a responsive manner, uh, I can just open the tools and drag this. You can see that it will simply resize to whatever. So that's now a responsive email template, hopefully. Um, so I could go into detail. The reason I'm not going overly uh, in detail, as I mentioned, with the styles and, and necessarily the layout is because honestly, this is only ever going to be used in email templates. And the exact way that I've done it is really a way that I've simply tried and tested. And you have to mess around and try very specific ways of doing things to see what email clients support. So there's no point in me kind of going into that other than explaining that obviously it's a table, a row, a column, and that I'm aligning things. And I'm, I've explained why I'm doing things, but beyond that explanation, you really don't need it. You can you can take this template and mess with it yourself um, and then see what works for you. But I'd highly recommend sticking to a very similar formula for adding padding and adding spacing and things and embedding tables inside of columns in order to change the widths and things like that. So that's the email template done and we've done it in DNA web uh, which also means we have um, a nice clean um, thing that we can use SAS and sh variables and everything uh, and ultimately we get an output here that's raw HTML um, so what it's boiled down to now is we have an output file here which is the actual generated HTML as I mentioned this won't work in an email client or it might work in some but not in others but what they typically don't like is this they don't like linked style sheets so new um, email clients do old ones just simply don't so we want to inline the css or rather we want to chuck the style in the body first and then we want to inline uh, all the css so instead of it being a class it will then be a style directly on every element um, so to be like here style equals and then all the elements inside the container class would be directly chucked in here um, and that's called inlining or yeah, CSS inlining. And we can use a tool to do that for us. We don't need to do it ourselves. Um, so what we're going to do now, in order to inline this text and make it usable, um, we will take this HTML output, the web root HTML. Um, we will then delete those two links, chuck a style body here um, to chuck it in here. Then we'll go to the outputted um, asset CSS and go to the outputted CSS. Copy the um, reset one, copy the style one, um, and then that's effectively now the same thing. We've just moved the style from links to embedded in the body. So that's step one. Select all that text and copy it. And now what you want to do is open the website uh, inliner.cm, and this is the one I use, and it's from Campaign Monitor. And all you do is paste that text in, and you can see it's all in here right now. Um, and your table's got no styles. You click make in line, and then you'll see now 
all the styles that are applied in the style sheet are now directly on all the elements. And this is basically to allow it to be uh, friendly for uh, emails. So now you've got that output, you can copy that and that's now ready for um, being sent as an email as a test. So I'll make a, a document here, paste it in. Uh, I'll just save this to desktop. So we'll save it called say email test.txt just to test this. And this is in desktop email, email test.txt. So this is what we now want to send as a HTML email and verify it works. Uh, so to do that now, we'll just, um, I think I'm happy with this. I can't see me having to edit this. Uh, that's generated output, so I'll just undo that for now. Uh, so I've got that copied in. I'm quite confident because I've you know, proven and tried this out that that should be okay. This is what we're expecting it to look like. Um, and now we will make um, a project to make use of that. So in the email in here, I might as well just chuck in uh, email send tester. And I'll just do command line um, .NET new console. Then we'll just send it in a console app. I'm not really bothered about doing anything fancy for this. Uh, so we have that in there. We can now open the email tester. And now if we go to program, uh, we'll just quickly write a really quick and easy um, our username equals no reply for seto.com uh, var password equals some password. And you can do this however now, this is just basically we have the content we're ready to send and we will send it properly in the next video through the server. This is just a quick way of just sending a test message. Um, so new mail message, uh, no reply for seto.com is where it's coming from. It's going to go to contact angel6 to me because uh, I want the message, want to see what it's like. Uh, message subject uh, equals test word, or rather verify your account, we'll say, just for, so it looks a bit more like what it's meant to be. The body now wants to be the actual uh, file we just created, so I'll just do file.readalltext. And in here, we'll put an at symbol, so we can put forward slashes uh, once. Go to the text file itself here, hold shift and right click, copy as path, and then just paste the path in. And that will now read all the content into a message body. Set the as body HTML as true, because we want it to be a HTML email. Um, then we've got the SMTP client, so I'm gonna use my Office 365 account to send an email. Um, so you can follow this if you have a Microsoft Office 365 email. You can just change this, this, and this to your actual emails. Uh, you know, your email username and password, and you'll be able to send this as a test. Uh, so this is a new SMTP client. Uh, Client.credentials uh, equals new network credentials. And that will be the username password that we made. Uh, and then we have the host for specifically Office 365, as you guessed it, smtp.office365.com. Uh, the port is 586 for TLS, I believe that is, or I can't remember which way, but I know that's the port. Uh, then the SSL for Office emails is enabled. And then finally, send the email. Uh, and that's it. That should now send an email. Obviously, this password's wrong because uh, it's live on a video. Uh, but now if we run this, um, I will basically set the right password, uh, hide it off screen, and then run. And you'll see that this will run um, and send an email. So now you can see this. My email's opened up. And here's the new email I've just got. So I'll click this email. Uh, and you can see here now I've got the email. Uh, the font has remained, I believe. Um, 
it looks slightly messed up. So I'll tweak this. Um, the images obviously won't work because the relative at the minute will change that to an absolute. Um, but here's the email. Most of it's all good and working. Like I said, those pictures won't work because we'll, we'll chuck them um, up to Git or somewhere where we'll point the email to. They'll have to be an, obviously an absolute Earl to, to find the, the paths. Um, this button should work though. Um, so I will take a quick look at that now and figure out why not. Okay, so I just paused the video and figured out the issue. There's one line basically in here that stopped the border working on the button uh, that I forgot. In order for the anchor to obey padding in all email clients, it needs an actual border. So I mimicked the border radius and color, but I also needed to actually set um, an actual border. So like as in a one pixel solid border to force the padding to work. Um, so I just changed that one line there um, to get that to work. Um, and now in the emails, uh, there's the old one and there's the new one. And you can see basically the, um, the padding is back on the button. So that's that done. Uh, the only reason this email is showing the font right now is because it's actually on my machine. Uh, I've already got it installed. So the one thing we also need to do is include uh, in the header. This is how easy it is. Uh, just go to um, Google fonts.google.com and type in whatever font you want. So I'll use quicksand, uh, click the plus button, uh, click down here, and then you can copy this link href here. Uh, just take that and plunk it in the head. And basically then this name now quicksand is available and our original style that set the font as quicksand would now work if the client machine didn't have the font and also the email allows it to download. So this is really the only step to try and enable web fonts when it's not on a machine. Um, so that's all there is to that. Uh, the button now works. Um, so there's nothing left to do there, really. Um, just generate the file. Um, and then obviously you'd resend um, the email, which we've verified works now. So that's all there is to um, doing the email side there. Uh, what I'll do is push this source code to um, GitHub now, and then just tweak the asset locations to be absolute to assets that really work. And we'll send one final email um, that shows the, the images, and then we're all good to go. So I'll just pause this, upload this code to um, GitHub and then point these to the GitHub images for now so they work and you can see them. So you can see now I've just pushed this actual code we're working on uh, up to Git. So now it's in email, HTML template and then here's the source code now that I've moved it to. Uh, so we go to the source, working in assets and images and then it's these files you want. So if we click, um, there's a content we can do. I don't know if there's a few images I'll show it. Yeah, so we can use this uh, direct Earl, absolute Earl here, uh, and we'll just make use of that. So we go to here and we'll change this now from small um, to this absolute Earl. And we'll do the same for the bottom one here, and it will be text logo. So that's that done. Uh, we have uh, where are we? We need to just spin up. I'll stop DNA web one second. Let me just spin DNA web back up. And it's going to reopen that. That's fine. So we've now generated the new uh, index.htm. So I'll run this through once more. So get the HTML file, remove the two CSS links. Add some style here. Go to the CSS reset, copy and paste that in. Style, copy and paste that in. Select it all, copy it, and then go to CSS inliner, paste it in, make it inline, copy it all, and I'll chuck it into the um, the new email. Where are we? Just put it in, email template, templates, web root. Nope. Um, 
email sender. Oh no, of course it was a temporary file I made on my desktop. So I'll just recreate the uh, file, save it on my desktop a minute, just a text file, uh, email.txt. Uh, I'll just reopen the email sender now. And then I'll just run uh, to send the new text as we've done uh, in the video just. So you can see we'll just open up the email sender. Um, I'll fix this password to be again the the real password and then run this and then show you the output of the email. So that's, that's sent and you can see now that here's the new email with the actual uh, images in. So we had the first one where we got padding mistakes, second one where we've now got the padding and the final one where we've actually linked to real images in GitHub. So there's the final email. Uh, that works and shows the font. And we can also view this, see how we don't get rounded borders. That's because this is uh, Windows Mail. Uh, so if I just log into um, my actual Outlook online client, um, you'll see that we'll have um, the rounded buttons. And you can see here in the actual online browser version, uh, we get the rounded uh, buttons. Um, you can also see that even though that one fails in mail, it shows up perfectly fine in Outlook Online. Um, so this is where I'm saying that you won't always necessarily see an issue in one, but you have to be testing it uh, you know, across multiple different browsers and styles to make sure it works everywhere. So um, I'm happy with this. You can also see, by the way, in Online 1, it's not showing the images um, because to help protect privacy, it's been blocked. Uh, so you click to enable, and there's your pictures. So it's just a... You know, that's what some email clients do as well. But there's the final working um, email that also is responsive, uh, that works, you know, fine. So I'm happy with that now. That's all done. Um, so hopefully this video was useful. Uh, I always mention at the end of the videos, if you want to support what I'm doing, I've got a Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash angel six, uh, and all your support's welcome. Uh, if you've got any questions or queries about the videos, just leave comments and I always get back to you. Uh, and then the next video, we'll put this HTML template into an actual um, server, the server we're building, and have it sent to a client. So this is a real email with the real username and an actual link that works. So we'll, we'll plumb all this actual template in uh, in the next video.